All right, hi guys. So today I figured we would feature another specific plant species. And today we're gonna to be talking about the Peperomia caparata. Peperomias are probably one of the most common house plants and more than likely it's because of how easy they are to care for and how adaptable they are to our home environments. Now Peperomia caparatas are originally native to Brazil and correct me if I'm wrong but the original Peperomia caparata is the emerald ripple which is the common green species. And there are so many numerous cultivars and varieties of Peperomia caparatas that they've come in other color forms such as the Silver Frost, which have a bluish silver tint to them, to something as dark and burgundy as this one here that can also come in a somewhat variegated variety. We've seen red, we've seen purple, we've seen pink, we've seen all different kinds of variations of this plant. Now if you're new to peperomias, their care is extremely simple but the trickiest part would probably be the watering. Oftentimes we water when we feel the soil is dry but I find with peperomias the best way to really note whether to water them is by the texture of the leaves. As you can see this plant is known for its very rippled or kind of ruffled texture to the leaves that when you know it's time to water, the leaves will get very soft and flexible. When you feel the leaves and they feel very rigid or somewhat tough, you know that it's definitely watered enough and you wanna leave it alone. They are very sensitive to overwatering, so this I find to be the easiest technique of knowing when to water them versus looking at the soil. But when I know my leaves are tough, I know it's watered well. Now these are native to Brazil, so they do come from a tropical environment. However, humidity can be very forgiving uh, and they, they do tend to live in a common household humidity. So if you don't have a very humid home or a humid environment, they tend to survive and do just fine. Obviously any tropical plants that have a lot of humidity where, will fare better. However, peperomias I found in my experience don't really sway too hard or are too picky as to a drier climate. Now the nice thing about peperomias is they tend to be very compact plants. So they do very well in small spaces. If you want a plant that's not gonna outgrow the space that you have it in right now, peperomia are very safe for that. They do prefer a medium light, at least when I say peperomia, of course I'm talking about the caparata, but most peperomia have very similar care, although there are some exceptions, but the, these in particular caparatas do prefer a medium light. I've kept mine in a medium light or under a grow light, but a couple of feet away, so they don't get very strong light and they actually tend to thrive in that. There have been times I've had it in low light and the plant will be okay, but I will also notice a little bit more legginess or fewer leaves. And so I had to make adjustments to make sure that my plant had a little more fullness to it, shall we say, and medium tends to be the best for them. Now, of course, everybody's climate or circumstances might be different. So how your plant will respond in your space will all be a matter of patience and observation. Now, as I was talking about the watering, because they do give you very obvious signs as to when they need to be watered. A lot of that might also have to do with the type of soil medium you use. I personally use a soil mixture that is very similar to my aeroid mix because the roots for peperomias are very small and fragile and somewhat fibrous. So because they they tend to spread very finger-like into the dirt. I do like somewhat of an airy mixture and nothing too heavy or too peaty because I don't want to, I don't want to suffocate the roots. So something that is somewhat airy but has a little bit of a, a grab to it to help stabilize the plant I find to be the most effective. So you could do a peat based mixture, but I tend to shy away from peat. I prefer to go with a coca coir, and then I mix that with a little bit of 
uh, perlite and I might add a few small coke um, not cocoa chips uh, well I guess you could use cocoa chips too but um, orchid bark a very fine orchid bark where the chunks are very small so it, is, it resembles a forest floor and I tend to get really great results from that now one thing I do notice about peperomias is they do pre prefer to have a warmer climate so if you have a very cold climate if you live in a very cold climate or you tend to get very cold or harsh winters, you definitely want to protect them from the severe weather changes because they're a tropical plant, they prefer warmer temperatures. Anything above 60, it will be perfectly happy. Anything too hot and more desert-like conditions, you'll notice you'll need to increase your watering frequency, but they will survive and they will be fine. Uh, one of the things I have personally noticed about peperomias is they tend to be very uh, pest resistant. I have not had any huge issues with pests. Now that does not mean that they could not have pests, but I have not experienced any type of uh, spider mite or thrip issue or uh, aphids or any common household pests. But that does not mean you should not care for your plants as if you were to prevent the pest. So you would still want to ensure that your leaves are clean. You would want to ensure a regular cleaning of your plant just to make sure that preventative measures are in place because anything's possible. Now they have been recognized as a non-toxic plant so they are very safe to have around your cats and dogs even though we don't want them chewing on them just because they can. You still want to make sure that you aren't getting little bites on your plants, but at least we know that they're somewhat safe. As far as propagating peperomia, there are several ways you can propagate this plant. You can divide by either separating a mother plant into two when you notice you have several stalks in here. Some, some peperomia species, and I believe the caparata is one of them, can often grow pups or little mini baby peperomia caparatas that you can pull away from the mother plant and have grow into a new one. Or I think the easiest in my experience has been to propagate via leaf. If you want to propagate your peperomia via leaf, you would definitely cut the leaf off via the petiole. Uh, right at the base of the leaf is probably the safest part. You would want a nice healthy leaf and you can propagate in either a sphagnum moss or soil. I've noticed sphagnum moss uh, is has been more effective for me but you would want to make sure that you get very good aeration so that your leaf won't rot and once you leave the leaf on the surface of your propagating medium over a period of time you will notice little roots growing out of your peperomia leaf and will eventually start growing new leaves and you have yourself a new baby little peperomia caparata plant uh, i notice peperomias tend to be a love it or hate it type of plant so let me know what you think of this plant. I'd really like to know if you're a fan of the peperomia, if you're a fan of the peperomia caparata, if you're a fan of certain color varieties of this plant, if you have them, if you struggle with them, what your thoughts are because I actually love them and anytime I see a new color variant, I get a little excited. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. Really appreciate it. And let's share some peperomia love. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I did that. Sometimes I just do things and I just wonder what the heck is wrong with me. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Bye!